Hi, sweeties. How are you doing? Welcome to F Round and Find Out season. It is a very beautiful season, and some people are experiencing it big time. I love it when Black people tell people things and they do not listen. The implications are not uh, something that I do not want to interfere with because I cannot even do anything when it comes to that. Now, do you know what's going on? I just found out that, that how many millions of Muslims voted for Trump. I actually knew they were going to vote for Trump because they were already told that, uh, I mean, he has promised them peace. And for that reason, they are going to vote for him, right? And so Palestinians are out there lying to us that they voted for third party when there is a video that has been circulating around telling them instead of voting for Kamala Harris, vote for Donald Trump. They, they, they already voted for Donald Trump. He has won. And I am so happy for them. Now, do you all know the season? They are calling him out to call out the ceasefire that is going on in Lebanon and in Palestine. And the man is telling them, F around and find out. I ain't in for you people. Black women been telling you people. Black people been telling you people. Now they are angry and saying, why is it that there is nothing like uh, election uh, ele election education? Like during election, people should be educated on some implications or the things that are going to happen if you vote for the wrong person. Black people also hear the stories to let you all know that you all call them oppressors, right? You all call them all names because you think that uh, your savior has come. Now you all can see what it's about to happen. I love it when some people F around and find out. Let's get into this video. Welcome to Fuck Around and Find Out, where we make fun of MAGA for the choice that they've made that's going to doom us all. It's gallows humor, the only kind worth having. And before you leave a negative comment on this video, Trumpers, guess what? It only makes me money, so I'm fine with it. I'm fine with you showing who you are. That's what this series is all about. You getting the consequences of your choice. Remember yesterday when I introduced you to Mina, the Middle Eastern North African Chamber of Commerce, a group that organized 3.5 million Muslims to vote for Donald Trump? I have some updates for you. The mood in Dearborn, Alawe said, is a complex mix of disbelief and wary curiosity. Trump came to Dearborn and made a lot of promises, he said, adding that residents he's spoken to are wondering what Trump will do for Palestinians. Not a fucking thing. He's going to make a hotel that the rest of you can possibly work out if you're not dead. Okay. Alawe thinks that the reality is obvious. It's clear as day. He's playing us, he said. I think he's going to target us. Wow! Where the fuck would you get an idea like that? How did that come out of the blue? It's because he fucking said it, bruh. He said it while he was running and you voted for him anyway. This is the consequences of your actions. That's what he's going to do. He's going to target our families and it's going to hurt us. So I think we're about to find out. It's good that you're aware. <laughs> and we're going to laugh at you while you do. How is it? How is it that you didn't figure this out the first time? How is it? that you didn't figure it out. How is it? Let me ask you this. How did you look at the candidate saying, I want an immediate ceasefire, okay? And the candidate saying, I want him to finish the job. How did you look at those two and think, yeah, this guy's the one that's gonna save us. Okay. You see how that's a you problem? You see how that's an arrogance problem, an uh, intellect issue? that you have right there. Yeah. Normally a vote is a calculated risk, right? Normally when you vote, you, you do as much research as you can if you're a responsible human being and you make an educated choice about who's gonna be possibly the best for you, right? It's a risk, it's a risk because you have to wait and see when they follow through with what they're doing to see if they actually obey the promises that they made to you. It's an educated risk. When you vote for the person who literally says, I'm going to send them back. I'm going to begin a mass deportation. I think denaturalization is a great idea. And also, I'm going to ban travel into this country from every country that has Muslim people in it. Weird that you thought that was the guy. In this case, you didn't make an educated risky decision. You just dropped the ball. You jumped off a fucking cliff.
You didn't have any inhibitions here. This wasn't an educated guess. This was you riding on feels. And that is irrational. So you made an irrational choice on your feels and didn't pay attention to the information given you and you chose poorly. Do we remember what happened to the guy who chose poorly? I think we do. Yes, that was an Indiana Jones reference. I'm an 80s kid, shut up. And I'm gonna laugh. I'm gonna laugh, you guys. I'm not built for anything but laughing at dark shit. I am going to laugh at you. Even if I'm not actually laughing, I'm laughing. If I have to suffer, you're gonna suffer right along with me. This fuck around and find out comes to us from, well, I'll just read it to you. Allow me to introduce you to Mina, the Middle East North African Chamber of Commerce. All right, here we go. Dear President-elect Trump, on behalf of Lebanese Americans within our MENA American Middle East North African Chamber of Commerce, we congratulate you on your historic return to the White House. Dearborn, Michigan, a city with the highest concentration of Arab Americans outside the Middle East, turned red this presidential election due to your genuine outreach to our community and our belief that you are the optimal choice for our democracy, economy, and in matters of foreign policy. Were you smoking crack when you made that determination? <laughs> what? The over 3.5 million MENA Americans, some of whom reside in the swing states, are proud to have contributed to your margins of victory, particularly in Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Georgia. Your success is a testament to your resonance with the values and concerns of MENA Americans. Wow, if that's who you run with, are you sure you want to come off looking like that? Okay, whatever. In response to your renowned letter addressed to Lebanese Americans dated October 26, 2024. I haven't even heard of it. It's so renowned, in fact. And due to the escalation of Israeli attacks subsequent to the U.S. election. Oh, here it comes. We are urging your administration and transition team to apply your political influence in demanding an immediate ceasefire in Lebanon and Palestine. This aligns to the commitment towards lasting peace which you made in the letter and in person while signing the peace plaques. Furthermore, our meetings with your team leading up to your historic win underscored the importance of our dialogue in matters pertaining to Lebanon. These engagements have already led to robust lines of communication, including your recent commitment to pursue peace in Lebanon and your unprecedented and iconic visit. Kiss his ass a little more. You know, there's a word for people like you that comes from the medieval period, and it's called a lick spigot. I'll let you figure out what it means. As a matter of high importance and in delivering on your promise of November 6th ceasefire again, we urge you to call for an immediate ceasefire in Lebanon and Palestine while crafting a long-lasting peace in the region. Further, we believe your team's leadership will be instrumental in advancing productive U.S.-Lebanese relations. And for that reason, we would like to add our support to the appointment of a chief negotiator with the Lebanese government. We also want to highlight that an equitable and unconditional ceasefire... <laughs> You're not going to get that. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? would serve as a catalyst for all parties to negotiate a lasting peace as evidenced by historical precedent. Without a ceasefire, diplomacy becomes elusive. We look forward to collaborating with you and your team on implementing an immediate ceasefire. <laughs> You're so dumb. Bro. Bro. What? He literally, literally said... I would tell him to finish the job, as in destroy Gaza, as in take down Hezbollah, as in go into Lebanon and do fuck all. He already said it. In fact, his son-in-law, the one that he funneled almost a billion dollars to through his campaign, yeah, that guy that took two, mil two billion dollars from the Saudis, that fucking guy, that guy said, and I quote, 
He was looking forward to having some nice hotels in Gaza. Yeah, yeah, ceasefire, sure, sure, sure. What happens when you don't get it, huh? You going to figure out that selling out human rights to get something else regarding human rights was probably a bad call? Yeah, maybe, maybe someday soon, but by then, of course... All the people who are suffering right now will be dead. Good job, Mina. May you get everything you voted for, Mina. To introduce you to Mina, the Middle East North. Please, please go back and watch her entire video. Here's Donald Trump's response to Mina's calls for peace in the Middle East and for Donald Trump to live up to what he promised Arabs and Muslims here in this country. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump is sending a clear and direct message to Palestinians over in the United States and in Gaza by appointing Marco Rubio as your next Secretary of State. Here's what Marco Rubio had to say about the conflict. Senator Rubio, will you call for a ceasefire no, in Gaza? On the contrary, Rubio, are you filming it? Wait, I want you guys to get this. I want them to destroy every element of Hamas they can get their hands on. These people are vicious animals who did horrifying crimes. And I hope you guys post that. And that's what about the civilians that I blame are being Hamas. killed every day? Hamas should stop hiding behind civilians, putting civilians in the way. Hamas knew that this was going to lead to this. So Hamas should stop building their military installations underneath hospitals. So you don't civilians. care that 15,000 have died? Do. You don't care about the babies that are I being care. killed I think every it's day? Horrifying. I think it's yeah. terrible, and I think Hamas is 100% to blame. Thank that's what I think. You. Make sure you post that, please. You see, black American women, we really did try to tell you. We knew all of the players involved. We knew how they felt about what was happening over in the Middle East. That is why we galvanized for the betterment of you as well as us. And you told us, y'all rose and told us, keep Palestinian names out of our fucking mouths. That's what you told us. And then you backstabbed us further and chose to vote for the one that we were trying to warn you about. And now he's putting all of the pieces in place, the pieces that we knew about and tried to warn you about. There's more. Real quick, this video is for those of y'all who joined the Abandoned Harris movement, especially those across the former Blue Wall states, especially Dearborn, Michigan, who told us that if we supported Kamala Harris, we wouldn't welcome in your community. Oh, you all wonder who I'm talking about? Hold on. Vote for Jill, vote for Donald Trump. But do not give a vote to Kamala Harris and expect to be welcomed by my community. Fair enough. But when people start talking about the stores in our community that are no longer welcome there, I don't want to hear it. But um, who are you going to call now, Ghostbusters? Because Donald Trump has just announced he is going to appoint the former governor of Arkansas, Mike Huckabee, to be the U.S. ambassador to Israel. The Mike Huckabee that says the West Bank doesn't exist? Oh, you don't believe me. Hold on. Well, my feeling personally, and I'm speaking only as a person, uh, I think uh, Israel would only be acting on the property it already owns. I think Israel uh, has title deed to Judea and Samaria. Uh, there are certain words I refuse to use. Uh, there is no such thing as a West Bank. It's Judea and Samaria. There's no such thing as a settlement. Their communities, their neighborhoods, their cities. Uh, there's no such thing as an occupation. First, Marco Rubio as Secretary of State and now the former governor of Arkansas who says that basically the West Bank doesn't exist as the U.S. ambassador to Israel? Mm. Hmm. Well, it seems like this phone number is going to be getting a workout over the next few years. Y'all have the day you deserve. And y'all think Kamala Harris lost. Y'all think y'all were successful when all y'all did was vote in Bibi Netanyahu's 
boy who is going to ensure that Gaza becomes beachfront property. He's got a tag team, Mike Huckabee and Marco Rubio, and they are on the same page. And their interests do not align with yours. You know that old saying, when you dig a ditch, you better dig two, because one of those ditches may be for you. Mm -hmm. Good luck to you. We're trying the amount of MAGA people who are regretting their choice in vote is hilarious. It's like y'all did no homework and expected to graduate with honors. The number one Google search should not be, can I change my vote? You were supposed to do the homework before you voted for this. Now y'all worried about tariffs all of a sudden. I see people talking about, I didn't know that he was going to change the education department. My child has special needs and, and, and they may not get the needs that they need in school. Duh! I didn't see so many of y'all say, I didn't know the Affordable Care Act and Obamacare was the same fucking thing. Black folks called it Obamacare. <laughs> That's where that trend of that name came from. <laughs> it's initially called the Affordable Care Act. And now y'all won't have no care at all. Y'all talking about y'all VA assistance. Baby, that's gone too. Y'all unions. There won't be a union anymore. I'm learning something about Republicans and Democrats. Democrats, we actually study the person who's running for us. We look at their criteria. We look at their policies and we question them. Republicans, y'all just voted for the white man. I'm sorry, the right man. Now y'all sitting here boohooing because y'all family and friends have cut y'all asses off and y'all realize that the consequences of your actions are coming back to bite you in your ass. Not my problem. That's just not my problem. We need to have mandatory voter education. We need to have mandatory voter education. And I'm not saying this in jest or to make fun of a certain voter base. I think we would all be better off with a standardized, free, and accessible voter education program every four years. You need to take a test when you get your driver's license. You need to take a safety course when you get a firearms license. Teachers need to renew their certifications every X amount of years. Jobs that require licensure are also requiring education courses to renew those licenses every year. Why is it that we do not have easily accessible education courses for something as significant of a decision as an election? Since November 5th, I've seen countless posts about voters not understanding that the Affordable Care Act and Obamacare are the same thing, um, not realizing how tariffs work, misunderstanding the functions of each branch of government, etc. Posts about the spike in search results for can I change my vote immediately following the election. Hell, posts of people even asking where information was prior to the election. And I see posts of leftists clowning on them. Talking about literacy rates, education levels, no child left behind even. As if those things and the lack of access to education are not significant barriers that we should be combating. Lack of voter education is voter suppression. And a lot of our politicians are banking on the American people being uninformed. And like, I get that it's a lot easier to take somebody who's saying uninformed shit and leave them behind instead of informing them and educating them. Believe me, I get that. But I also think that that may be a part of why so many people on the other side of the political spectrum are so susceptible to indoctrination and why they so frequently see the left as elitist. Because there really is a lack of access to education for poor communities, uh, for rural communities. And we have a tendency to sort of write them off rather than lifting those barriers. Like if you ask somebody from the rural South why they view university education so poorly, they'll tell you it's because it's inaccessible. That's for somebody outside of their tax bracket. We as a country should be the ones providing the information for people to be able to make informed decisions about their future. Like 
obviously people are still going to be able to make their own determination and form their own opinions on policy, but without access to unbiased, objective information, how can we expect people to form unskewed opinions? Because right now their access to information is Fox News. Like, honestly, I think if we really had a solid free program that people could access to gain this information, we really would see a shift in a lot of people's thinking. Good afternoon, Michiganders. As the president said, we just had a, a positive meeting with President Trump. We as Muslims stand with President Trump because he promises peace. He promises peace, not war. We are supporting Donald Trump because he promised to end war in the Middle East and Ukraine. The bloodshed has to stop all over the world. And I think this man can make that happen. I personally believe that God saved his life twice for a reason. We've gotten to know and, and really uh, understand Muslims for Trump. How about that? Muslims for Trump. And, and it's become a big movement in Michigan, a beautiful movement. And you know what they want? They want peace. They really do. They don't want to be in wars. They're very smart. And, you know, it started off as a little thing, and it's grown and grown and grown. And, now we have a much bigger vote than they do. Can you believe that? Because they said, these people are stupid. All they want to do is, uh, they didn't know what to do. Actually, they were in between, and she has no idea. She doesn't know where the she is. She can't. And they liked me, and I liked them. And let me just tell you, they don't want, they want peace. They don't want to fight. And they're not involved in the terror and all the things that are going on. They're great people, and it's an honor for uh, them. I don't know where they are, but. Bebe, we've been warning you people. Black women did. Black people did. They came out in mass. Now, let me tell us something. Some of the education you needed during election is people's policy, right? And then some of you think black people were just playing around or we do not wish you people well. When I talk about policy and I talk about removing feelings and emotions when it comes to politics, some people think I know it all. Like I said before, I don't know it all. I am learning and I learn every day. When I say every day, every day, right? But there are some things I know. And some things, you see critical, like in using sense, using your sense, your brain, to know some certain things, it's something that should never leave you as a human being, right? Using your sense, it's something that shouldn't leave you. The truth is that uh, some of you all are not willing to learn. You are talking about uh, making, like, you know, so that people get to learn more about election and all of that. Even if that is, even if they are doing it, some people will still not learn because they do not want to learn. They already told them from their uh, from their uh, mosque or from their church that uh, you are supposed to vote this person and you are not supposed to vote for this person. Like they told some of you. Now, let me ask you people this. You can imagine how many million Muslims that came out that voted for this man, right? How many million? Millions of people voted for this man, probably because they were told, do not vote for this person. This is someone that is good for you. And I remember bringing a video where the Muslim community say they are going to vote for Trump. I am going to look for a way. If I find it, I attach it here so you all can say why. Because he has promised you people peace, right? Now that peace is raining and I see it all over you people. You all think black women were playing when they told you people to relax. We are going to make this work. 
We can speak to this person, my pressure. We cannot do this to this person. We have a reason why we are voting for this. Do not think that we do not care about what is going on in Palestine, Gaza, and all that. We care, but let's get this right first. Then we can look for a way to get the other one right, right? One was actually very, very bold, talking about how she wants ceasefire. And one was not bold to say, but he, he did not actually lie when he said that uh, he is going to finish the job. That was what he said, and he is going on that. So I am also not going to blame him because you all heard it. But you all said that uh, he promised you people peace. You all are a bunch of liars. I'm sorry to say that. You all are liars. The fact that some of you are very, very educated and still did what you did, it's something that I am trying to wrap my head around, right? But yeah, we'll leave it for another day. You are agitating for voter, voters' education and all of that. You all go around and educate yourself. People trying to educate you. I also saw black people in the uh, uh, outside. I saw people, black people going around before the election, going to states by states. The lemon was one of it. I saw Christian, 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 yes. I saw the majority of them going round, round, round. And I saw, okay, there are some white boys that I saw. Was it Harry? I saw Harry. I saw Dean. I know those ones were really, really out for democracy. I saw them all around. I saw what was this ginger something? Is it white? I saw I saw some of their videos, which I also did not bring here. I brought Christians with you, right? I saw some of them going around trying to educate people the implications of some of the uh, uh, the election, like you know what the mis what will happen if they make mistake and all that. So not like I did. I saw. People must not wait for government to organize something. That's why you go to school. You go to school to learn that when you learn, you will be able to read some certain things and understand. And when some people in your family are not able to read, you can help them to put them in order. That is what life is all about. That is what education is all about. Right? Sometimes government must not do it for you. But what are you doing for yourself? as a human being, not all the time, government, what you're waiting for government to do something for you. What are you doing for yourself, right? Now you all can see the F around and find out. It is the beautiful season of F around and find out. Let's get it. You all thought black women were being mean. Now you all can say it. Now they are ready to come over. You all think that uh, because he promised you peace, empty promises, and that uh, he's going to fulfill it. Now, can you all see the people he's appointing? He is literally coming for all of you. When I say all of you, all of you, and nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. You think he is not party with Netanyahu. Netanyahu that I brought his video here and I told you people that he had a meeting with Netanyahu and the meeting says do not stop the ceasefire because if you do it is going to some people can actually some people don't understand what they call opponent frustration your opponent when it comes to politics can actually frustrate you in a way that you probably the people will see you as a bad person now when it comes to politics it takes an intellect to understand when there is a fabrication of something, stories and all that, and when something is real. Some of you refuse to understand that. We've been telling you, black women have been telling you, right? So now you all refuse to listen. The Even the voice note was all out. The conversation was all out. That he is saying, do not call the ceasefire off, right? Because if you do, it's just going to be in her favor, not in my favor. And sincerely speaking, he also does not even have intentions of calling the ceasefire. You all were complaining that uh, um, uh, was uh, camera, uh, Kamala Harris and uh, Joe Biden administration were giving money or supporting. Kamala Harris was supporting. Now you all are going to see the real support. 
because they've been told you all. Kamala Harris could not do anything. Why? Because she is not the president. She was the vice president. There is a limit to what a vice president. I don't know if majority of you understand that a uh, most uh, like vice president is like a fancy position. They don't get to do a lot. They don't get to make a lot of decisions on their own. They wait from the the highest power to execute some order to it to move. But some of you think black women are lying. Black women are colonizers. I see a lot of ignoramus, ignorant people, some black people too. Some are immigrants. I see all of you. Those that have decided that I am going to keep hugging Palestinians, whether they are right or wrong. That is to tell you how ignorant some of you are too. Because if you all are, you've been advising them, you all would have advised them or tell them, see guys, pipe low. But you all kept on sharing their, their posts, feeling their ignorance. Now this is the season. F around and find out. I hope you all are saying it and I hope you all enjoy it. I love it for you all. See you all in my next video. Bye for now.